Rachel Reeves warned over risks of private finance plan for schools and the hospitals. I'm going to read into this exclusive from iNews, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an exclusive from iNews with the headline that Rachel Reeves has been warned over the risks of private finance plan for schools and hospitals. The spending watchdog says the PFI comes with risks including vital facilities like hospitals or schools being returned to public sector in poor conditions. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share across social media so others are notified of this video. <clears throat> it's really important that, you know, for all the, 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 the things about how they want to fix this and fix that and whatnot, you know, you don't really hear a lot of positivity coming out of this Labour government. There are some things that they, they, they should take credit for, obviously, with the return of obviously with uh, of, of trying to restore some kind of a wage structure. Returning some wages to public sector workers is obviously a major boost. There is still a long way to go, but... The finances are still not in a very good place. Um, we still have not achieved any. Uh, just I saw a report today, actually, from Ty Davis recording that apparently we still haven't uh, uh, culminated any growth. We're still flatlining at the moment, <clears throat> which is very problematic. It's going to take a lot of work for for Labour to get growth going again. Um, but I do believe they will get it going at some point. I do hope that the budget in October will obviously make a massive difference here. But you know the, the 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 risks that they have i mean the thing is is that right listening to this is like yes of course there are risks um but sometimes but <clears throat> what we've been having for the last 14 years is oh we've got to cut this back and we've got to cut this back we've got to cut this back cut, cut this back. <clears throat> we don't want cutting back what we need is investment we need to put the money in and you can't expect private sectors to do everything for you you can't expect the private sector to put money in when the public is when the public sector is not if the government's not prepared to put any money in of its own if, unless public unless private businesses are sh are very certain that they're going to get back an investment they're not going to put their money in private companies need to know if they're going to put their money in are they going to get a decent uh, you know they, they know is the risk worth it <clears throat> and at the moment, not everybody is in favour of it. <sighs> and what we obviously we, we've talked about this, and I've covered it on a few prime uh, prime minister's questions. Obviously, the conditions of obviously some of the hospitals and schools, which are a major problem as well. Now, the government are looking into. I, I'm pretty sure that they will have some funding available for schools and hospitals to be dealt with. If not now, then obviously at the budget as well. But obviously, it's a, it's a case of time this will all take as well and i do think that's really really important but let's read a bit more into what the spending watchdog has said here guys so this public spending watchdog is warm rachel reads against repeating the mistakes made by new labor when it used the controversial pfi private finance scheme to build infrastructure <clears throat> so gareth davis the head of the national audit office said you have said using pfi comes with risk including vital facilities such as hospitals or schools being returned to the public sector in poor condition the Chancellor was urged to be realistic about the profit motive of companies to take that over the initial cost of building infrastructure and that therefore must be clear about how to deliver that and who pays. Without doing so, PFI's private finance initiatives can leave public services uh, saddled with high costs and being tied to inflexible contracts, Mr Davis warned in an article for the I. It comes after, uh, after the I revealed that Keir Starmer and Mr Reeves were considering a reset on PFIs that would see such a schemes revive to build much needed infrastructure emit type budgets. <coughs> Meanwhile, the Financial Times have reported that the Chancellor was considering US PFIs to bring down the cost of the nine billion pound lower Thames crossing, which has been marred in plan of limbo for fifteen years at the cost of hundreds of millions of pounds. The PFI process involves private financiers bearing the minimum cost for a project with the government paying it off in the long term, and it has proved controversial historically. Rigid contracts, rigid contracts written under the previous Labour government between 1997 and 2010 have left some schools seeing nearly 20% of their budgets going towards meeting PFI costs. The process was largely abandoned under the Conservatives following repeated cases. Mr Davis said that admit tight public finance is one of the major challenges for the new gov excuse me, may government must be making public money work harder. <coughs> but they're already working harder. 
this is the thing that are already working harder like and we are already like many infrastructures and in that are we are cut to the bone so asking the public for more is just ugh. major infrastructure projects are one of five areas in which labor can spend money more effective efficiently and effectively as you bemoaned insufficient realism about costs and poor control of how projects are taken forward in the past tuning to pfi the cur the Comptroller and Auditor General wrote in I government has already indicated that we will likely use private as well as public finance to fund major projects, but this will use public finance comes with a risk to be managed. And again, realism is important here. Private back to backers want a return in their investment. So being clear about how they will be achieved and who pays is essential. Exactly. <clears throat> and here's the thing. No private backer is going to put their money in unless they are guaranteed not just that money back, but also interest. There's no benefit for a private for a private finance to, to go in if they're not going to get something back in return. And they will want something back in return. Some poorly designed private finance initiatives schemes have left public service managers with a lack of operational flexibility or high cost of damages. <clears throat> but there are plenty of examples of good practices to help schemes avoid these problems. The former cabinet secretary, Lord O'Donnell, has warned Labour against using the, uh, PFIs to cut immediate spending from government to balance at the budget. So this uh, piece here, this is quite a long piece here. So this is, here's how to make the public uh, money work harder by Gareth Davis, the head of the National Audit Office. So this is what he's had to say on it. The Prime Minister and the Chancellor's recent speeches and their impartialities for the forthcoming budget frozen the sharp focus or question of how the new government will reconsolidate its ambitions with a phys tough physical backdrop and there is no avoiding difficult choices. As head of the National Audit Office, the NAO, the UK's independent public spending watchdog, I am acutely aware of the scale of the challenge to help meet it. The government must make public money work harder. Our insight based on lessons learned from our work spending the belief of the UK public policy can help civil servants and new ministers do that. Perhaps unsurprisingly, we have previously identified major infrastructure projects as one of the five areas where there is significantly potential for spending money more effectively, efficiently and effectively. Let's examine this briefly. The estimated cost of government's 244 largest infrastructure projects presently stands at £805 billion. But, re but recent experience of delivering the largest products showed that there is a governance problem. <clears throat> we've seen insufficient realism as the outlet and the lining range of costs and subsequently poor control at the specification along with misal misaligned commercial incentives and supply chain inflation these factors go a long way into explaining the escalating costs that resulted in the cancellation of hs2 hs2 phase two a lot of money was wasted in hs2 and i was somebody who actually strongly wanted hs2 to keep going despite the cost that he was making because we needed new new infrastructure, especially connecting the north to the north to the south. But it didn't happen. And it's very frustrating because the north needs needs new transport infrastructure without a shadow of a doubt. Not London, the north. Government has already indicated that it will likely use private as well as public finance to fund major projects. But the use of public finance will come at risk to manage. Again, the realism is important here. Private backers will want the return on their investments, so let's be clear about how they're achieved and who pays and who is essential. Some poorly designed private uh, firms. I think we've read all this already. <coughs> a second area of financial opportunity is reducing fraud and error to make more money available for government priorities. In 2022-2023, HM Revenue and Customs, as HMRC, estimated a £40 billion shortfall or tax gap in revenue. Meanwhile, the Department of Work and Pensions, DWP, last year overpaid £9.4 billion in benefits. <coughs> £40 billion shortfall, £9.4 billion in benefit. Yeah. This is not uh, this is not good. Both departments are working hard to improve defences against fraud and recover funds for the taxpayer, but the legacy of the pandemic is still visible in higher rates of fraud and stretch investigatory resources. Eliminating all fraud and error is impossible. Closing the tax gap and reducing the overpayments require a managed approach. That's why government should consider fraud and error in policy design from the outset. Measured losses each uh, each year and identify ways to reduce them. <coughs> Though we're not alone in suggesting that making public sec public money work harder ultimately relies on increasing public sector productivity, we have specifically identified four key drivers. First, the government needs to better quality data to inform its policy choices, understand service performance and realise the potential of new technology. Second, a focus on well-managed innovation and rigorous evaluation will help spread effective solutions more reliably. 
Third, the planning and spending framework needs to recognize that the better results and greater efficiency rely on a whole system of approach to cutting across departments and sectors. In this context, we will be assessing the government's mission-led approach which with interest. And finally, we must be underpinning all rights, leadership, skills and culture to succeed. And finally, innovation and good practice. Take the second key driver initiative approach must have if government is to tackle the many pressing public policy challenges on its plate. The technology we need to achieve net zero do not yet exist and artificial intelligence will play an important role in improving data-led service. But our work will also demonstrate the benefits for disciplinary applications of existing good practice. And for example, active travel England is making promising progress in helping local authorities across the country improve the quality of their transport schemes aimed uh, at increasing activity levels with long-term benefits to health and well-being and the knock-on savings for the NHS. The NAO's core role is to help Parliament hold government to account for how it spends public money. By drawing out uh, the learning from this work, we also help tackle the productivity challenges and I look forward to discussing with our work with MPs, both newly elected and those returning to the House of Commons in the coming weeks and months. This is very good, uh, interesting, uh, an interesting bit there uh, from Gareth Davis at the National Audit Office about making money, public money work harder. But <coughs> And I do hope that we can mitigate a lot of these frauds and errors, for example. Like those frauds and errors are quite a lot, quite significant. Uh, I'd like to see, I'd like to see that that being dealt with. It is a major, major overhaul. You know, we have to remember that it's really important to stress that Yes, our previous Labour governments have made uh, previous Labour government has made mistakes as well. I'm not going to bat an eyelid on that, but you know the last 14 years have been extremely damaging, uh, extremely damaging for the public, extremely damaging for working class people, extremely damaging for the poorest in society, been extremely damaging for our, our reputation abroad, um, the services and systems that we are in place. And I do hope Labour takes takes what has been said here on board, especially around it when it comes to PFIs. Um, some of you will know a lot more better than I will about PFI, so do, do feel free to lay out more in the comments down below. But what I will say is, obviously, if you are going to go with PFIs, yeah, you you need to do it in such a way that th that there isn't a mountain of debt left behind, too much of debt left behind for the, for for those that for for public uh, sector. For both publics who have to deal with it after in the aftermath um if we are going to do that but it is i do think yeah that this was important to talk to discuss with you guys but enough about what i think what do you guys honestly think what do you guys think about pfis what do you think about the warnings over risks of private finance plans for schools and the hospitals or other ideas that this labor government are planning to introduce let me know your thoughts and more in the comments section down below if you found this video interesting, please hit the like button. We greatly appreciate it. Share this across social media so others are notified of this video. And subscribe because it really does help support the channel. And if you want to go one step further, finally support me and the work that I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p or join me on Rumble or Patreon for exclusive content on those platforms. So thank you all so much for watching and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.